Hey guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So I decided to do a little experiment. I've got a group of guys in the Southwest and every morning we train on HF doing some near vertical incident skywave propagation so that we can actually get our HF signal out to cover about a 300 mile radius. Uh, one of my buddies is out in the Las Vegas area and the other two are people within the state of Arizona and I uh, found myself on a quick trip with the wife out to the People's Republic and I had to make sure that I could maintain comms. But one thing I did differently on this trip was I decided not to tell the guys in my group that I was leaving. So I had been out of communication for two days, which could be a, a real emergency. So we've done about 600 miles over the last two days and uh, went ahead and quickly deployed uh, a little bit of gear in here and i already uh, at least was able to leave a message with one of my buddies so over here we have a jsa call station and i sent a signal to noise uh, request to my buddy mike and you can see him down in the noise floor of minus 21 and then i decided to go ahead and send him a message i put message okay i gave him my new grid which is charlie mike 95 oscar november no inner tie. Inner tie is the system we use to communicate over uh, basically a UHF VHF repeater system that connects uh, Idaho, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and I don't haven't had access for two days. So what's kind of cool is that this is the first time I'm doing that, and I did get an acknowledgement back from him. Now a couple of other new pieces of gear that I'm actually running. Uh, number one, you guys have seen my Panasonic FZM1 Mark II here. I have it mounted on the TAC form mount, and then behind it, I have a twin pair of these cup holder mounts that I got from Amazon. They're not the Lido mounts, and they have the one inch ball here. And I'm running the uh, IC705. But we've got the 705 running on just five watts using the uh, internal battery. And you can't see it right now, but outside we have the Hustler RM40. So while that is a vertical, and I'm pretty sure our range is somewhere between two and 300 miles from here to uh, the Las Vegas area, I have found that for whatever reason, it seems to work. Now I also brought an NFED half wave. I may do an experiment with that later, but right now I'm actually pretty happy with the setup. And what I told most of the guys, out there was that I'm not a big fan of the IC705, mostly because I enjoy manned portable work. And for me, I just don't find that it really works for that scenario because I do like to ruck a good distance. I have to carry support gear, a bunch of other stuff. But the 705 for me is going to be the radio that allows me to do uh, more vehicle mounted operations. I like this twin setup. I don't believe that the mounts are good enough for uh, in motion travel. Bottom line here is I'm trying to experiment with a use case of vehicle mobile, vehicle mounted operation for off-grid preparedness, whether it requires communication. And like I said, Mike right now has that message in his inbox. So just like before, we got the IC705 in the ArmorLock TPA pack frames. It's dressed the same way I had it before. And the nice thing about these frames is that they still allow access to the quarter 20 threads. So I purchased for this trip, a uh, one inch ball mount that is compatible with the ram mount system and it works pretty well so this guy was mounted in this location here this is the uh, cup holder mount that i picked up from amazon Lido has one i might try it and then i had an extra ram uh, mount here at the top i would not really recommend this while driving it works fine for the tablet i will tell you that much i did 600 miles with the tablet but with the keyboard dropped so i have two of these in fact uh it's really dark in here guys uh, so i had that one mounted right here and then on the entire right out i was running the tack form mount and like i mentioned before i like this one a lot because i can move the arms up so while driving i had the arms up here these ones dropped here and it allowed me to run power access power on this side and then the usb on this side i do have power it's a uh just a normal uh, DC uh, 16 volt power supply that plugs in right here and that ran to the top right there and then I was running just uh, not the IC705 but for the GPS for the offline this guy right here and I just ran that one right on the dash into the side right here in terms of batteries I just brought two of each I brought an extra one of just the normal 1800 milliamp hour uh, batteries. I did not buy the larger one. Uh, ICOM guys, I'm brand new to ICOM. These things were $129.99. That is absolutely ridiculous 
for one battery. I also found that if you're an IC705 user, uh, one of the other problems is that if you have a completely dead battery, even though you have external 12 volt DC, you can't turn on the radio. I had the IC705 locked up for six months and it was completely dead. Uh, for a second, I thought the IC705 was brick. So for me personally, I'm actually going to run a second battery fully charged and not uh, installed in the radio. So, that so since we have a few more minutes, let me show you something that I was running yesterday. I am dog fooding off grid. Uh, tech in a way that completely eliminates any third party that includes Google, Apple, all the guys, not even my phone, because the last thing I want is a forced operating system update. And the Panasonic FZM1, I control all of that. I'm running my own uh, customized version of Linux for the communication software, but using it for navigation as well. So we're getting ready for the night here. You can see Net Control is about to send off a message. I uh, got confirmation from my uh, buddy. Uh, Brian WN7D, Roger, Roger, have a good time, stay safe. Uh, just before I told him, hey guys, we're in wine country and um, I'm RF only, so no inner tie, no cell phone, no internet, none of that stuff. But on the way out here, I decided to use a application called Nabbit that I dropped in here and it is uh, from an era that no longer really exists and it's actually quite good for the seven inch display. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can navigate to my next stop. We'll go to bookmarks, and I don't have any bookmarks here. It's on the other tablet. So anyways, we have another destination we're going. We're going to uh, Rincon. We're going to the beach, and uh, I wanted to make sure that I could dog food this. I've learned a lot of details about Navit and how quirky it can be, but uh, we've gotten... A paper map and an atlas and my wife has um, a data package on her phone still but in general it's interesting trying to refine these off-grid techniques even though it is still using some tech I like the fact that it's tech that I control all right we're gonna do the net and then I'll go outside and share with you the uh, Hustler RM40 and a quick peek of the grounds all right guys well thanks for uh, sticking around for this one uh, not my typical video but I'd like to take every opportunity that presents itself as a chance to train and I just want to show you really quickly uh, the antenna system and super modest it's just the Hustler RM40 and it's mounted on the Diamond KS400 mount on the E450 uh, chassis here and very modest it doesn't go up terribly high and uh, I have tuned that antenna sometime back for the digital portion of the 40 meter band. The issue with the RM40 is that it is very high Q. There is a massive dip if you look at the SWR. Uh, so the bandwidth is very tight, usually about 10 kilohertz if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we only need three for the frequency we're sitting on for JS8. So really great way of having something ultra compact uh, that you can always have mounted. Now, the other thing that I will typically do is also bring my uh, Comet SBB5. It's the mount that I have, or the antenna I have for the Jeep for VHF, UHF. And the cool thing about this is that I have a connector that allows me just to quickly unthread this guy here, and I can put on the other antenna. So not great, but if I had to transition from HF to VHF, UHF, I can pretty easily. Uh, I was considering getting another K400 mount for the other side and removing the, uh, the FM antenna. All right, folks, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, guys, a little bit of bonus footage. We're still out here in the RV. We're uh, heading back today, but I just want to share with you kind of the success stories of uh, the Hustler RM40 that's right behind me. We are in uh, the People's Republic of California at Rincon Parkway. And I gotta tell you, we are in a position where I have not been able to deploy the um, NFED half-wave, and that Hustler RM40 is doing an incredible job. So we've learned a lot on this trip about our consumption uh, demands uh, on freshwater tank, gray water tank, black water tank, battery, internet. In fact, we've had almost no internet and have boondocked this entire trip. So I'm gonna to have to make some adjustments to uh, the RV, uh, namely bringing in the uh, inverter. Uh, I bought it a few years ago and repurposed it for a different project that you guys saw a few years back. But anyways, this setup is working incredibly well. So for starters, we're still running the IC705 mounted on five watts. 
Uh, looks like my buddy Mike right now in uh, Henderson, Nevada. I'm in California in Delta Mike 04 Hotel Hotel. And he said, good morning, Roger, Roger, ops, no. So for those of you who think you need a whole lot more right now with this particular mode in slow mode, JS8, with a vertical that takes no space whatsoever, hood mounted, with a very temporary uh, setup of just these two uh, mounts. Again, don't run them while in motion. Uh, the mount is fine in motion when just running the FZM1, like I said before, but definitely drop the keyboard. And I gotta tell you, it's great now running GPS. I've got nav it dialed in. And what I love about trips like this is I have a ton of notes on how to make everything uh, more field expedient. Usually I'm man portable, but now more vehicle expedient. So expect a lot coming through. And uh, yeah, so that message went through from Mike. So excellent. So anyways, like I said, guys, uh, make sure that you adjust accordingly. I also have some new realizations when it comes to the RV as a prep item. Uh, it's not at least boondocking for the amount of time that we have been. Uh, has been an eye opener so lots of adjustments coming if we ever had to take the rv to really leave uh, we are limited and dependent mostly on resources like water for other people that's going to be the big one uh, we can do solar ourselves and produce our own energy but water and even dumping we could take care of if we had to but the, the water is the big one and uh, we've had a hard time actually finding water easily on this trip. Uh, we put about uh, 1,500 miles so far. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. I know this was raw, but uh, again, I just love sharing the journey with you guys. Big thanks to the guys on Buy Me A Coffee. Cheers.